Hello. Today I'm going to talk about punishment. This is kind of a nasty topic, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's a topic that's not often talked about. Uh, Thorndike didn't think punishment worked very well, and so he uh, recommended that people not use punishment. Uh, Skinner had a similar opinion. He didn't think punishment worked very well, and he was a major uh, spokesman against the use of punishment. And in point of fact, in a lot of uh, human interactions, if you're annoyed with what somebody is doing and you scream at them, chances are it's not going to effectively suppress their behavior in the long run. And then the question is why? Is it true? So what we're going to talk about today, is it true that punishment doesn't work? Or uh, is it the case that punishment doesn't work only under certain circumstances. So let's consider a, an instance uh, where punishment is uh, something that you and I have no doubt encountered and uh, it, it hasn't worked very well. And that's uh, the um, business of getting a ticket for uh, speeding. If you're driving along and you're above the speed limit, they stop you and say, hey, you were 15 miles over the speed limit and give you a ticket. Uh, is that going to uh, suppress your driving over the speed limit? Well, it maybe the rest of that day it will, but by the next day and next week, you're going to go back to your old driving habits. So uh, giving out speeding tickets is not a very effective punishment procedure. What, uh, and what are the circumstances of a, a speeding ticket as a punishment procedure? Well, uh, you only rarely get a speeding ticket. You rarely get a speeding ticket when you're driving too fast. You, uh, you, you, on a long distance trip, you're going to be driving six hours and you get a speeding ticket in the fifth hour of your drive. <laughs> Is that the first time you went over, your, over the highway speed limit? <laughs> I bet not. And uh, you could spend days driving over the speed limit and never get a ticket. Uh, punishment, the ticket that you get usually doesn't occur, occur the minute you exceed the speed limit. You know, if the speed limit is 55 and you're driving at 65, as soon as you, you go above 60 miles an hour, boom, the policeman is there to give you a ticket unlikely right so uh the punishment is delayed uh long past your continued performance of the behavior that you're trying to discourage usually if you get a speeding ticket uh, it's because there is a policeman at the side of the road and often you can see the cop on the side of the road and so the punishment uh is uh, signaled by a warning stimulus and so and you tend to slow down when you, I do, <laughs> slow down when you see a cop at the side of the road. So uh, any slowing down effect that's caused by this uh, punishment is going to be limited to the presence of the cop. <laughs> and finally, uh, in our legal system and, uh, uh, and generally in our, uh, when we make due transgressions that we get fined for or even thrown in jail, uh, the aversive consequences uh, are initially fairly mild and they escalate. Even if, with uh, driving while uh, under the influence of alcohol, uh, and the first offense is not met with the same severity of consequence as the third or fourth offense in the United States. Now, there, uh, I understand that in Sweden, uh, if you're caught driving under the influence of alcohol, you lose your license, boom, right there. In the United States, you have to drive under the influence of alcohol and get caught lots of times before you lose your license. Um, and getting caught, of course, uh, involves uh, these same sort of things. Punishment is delayed. Uh, uh, there's usually a warning stimulus and so on. So punishment doesn't work. Uh, and that might lead you to generalize the, to the conclusion that punishment in general doesn't work. Well, you would be wrong. <laughs> punishment actually works to re re remarkably well. 
And the next slide shows you circumstance where there's no doubt punishment works. If you poke your finger in an electric, out, electric outlet and you get shocked, you're never going to do that again. <laughs> so their uh, punishment works uh, after just one, a single administration, and it works for a lifetime. People who have experienced this just never poke their finger in an electric outlet. Why? Well, you get shocked every time you do it. The shock is immediate. There are no warnings. It's not like the outlet says, be careful, all your fingers are getting close to the outlet. Don't do it. <laughs> There's no warning. <laughs> you get a shock. Uh, and a shock is delivered at a high intensity right from the get-go. So if these characteristics of punishment are met, you get a huge suppression of behavior. And uh, just to illustrate uh, that uh, and there are real punishment effects, Next slide shows you uh, accumulative records uh, from a study by Nate Azar who's done a lot of these. He was a student of Skinner's, and uh, he took quite, uh, he, he, he took exception to Skinner's claim that punishment doesn't work. He said, uh, Burris, I'm going to prove you wrong. So he had pigeons working on various on a variable interval schedule in this case, uh, and uh, in, in uh, the curve that has the steepest slope, there was no punishment. Uh, in the next one, uh, the pigeon got uh, punished for every 1,000th peck that it made. And look, even that produced some suppression of behavior. If you, uh, if you increase the frequency of punishment, so one out of 300 pecks, 200 pecks, uh, you get a lower and lower uh, rate of responding. And the data are incredibly orderly. So punishment works just fine. <laughs> you just have to do it correctly. Okay. Azrin now, with one of his uh, colleagues, also did this next experiment, which was done with human subjects, uh, in which uh, we may look at the next slide. Uh, this is Herman and Azrin, uh, where uh, they had. Uh, uh, human subjects uh, who were smokers that um, had to pull a plunger for access to uh, uh, cigarettes, and periodically they got a burst of noise as the punishing uh, uh, stimulus. If there was no punishment, there was a very high rate of responding. If uh, pulling this plunger uh, resulted in, uh, in punishment with no alternative response available, you get some suppression of behavior, but you get a huge suppression of behavior. This is, these are some of the most dramatic data in uh, the punishment literature, and people don't know about this. Everybody, every uh, parent needs to know about it. Every grade school teacher knows, needs to know about it. If you punish a response but provide reinforcement for an alternative response, then punishment just wipes out the behavior. The, this, the curve on the bottom, no response at all, is if you punish one be, uh, form of pl plunger pull, but you allow the subject to get, pull another plunger for the same reinforcer, and that uh, suppresses the punished behavior completely. So... Punishment can be highly effective. It just has to be administered, and it has to be uh, administered in connection with reinforcing alternative activities. And that's what's usually missing in uh, interpersonal uh, uh, examples of punishment. So I'm not sure if there is another slide. Is there another slide? Ah, yes, there is another slide. This, is, uh, this characterizes uh, how punishment typically occurs in an interpersonal situation where a parent is annoyed with what a kid is, kid is doing and screams at him. Uh, in these interpersonal situations, punishment is typically inconsistent. Uh, the parent is going to scream at the kid when the parent feels under a lot of stress, not necessarily when the kid is doing something bad. 
punishment is usually delayed. This kid could be doing this for a while and the parent ignores it and then gets totally fed up and boom, screams at the kid. So punishment is delayed. It may start with a warning and a gradually increase in intensity. That makes it ineffective. And uh, it's signaled by the mood of the parent. The kid knows, hey, my dad came home and he had a, must have had a rough time at work. He's really in a bad mood. I better mind what I'm doing. Uh, usually uh, punishment is signaled by the mood of the individual who's going to administer the punishment. And most importantly, there is no reinforcement for alternative behavior. The, the annoyed parent who screams at the kid doesn't subsequently give the kid a coloring book and then spend time encouraging and reinforcing the kid for coloring. So uh, uh, these characteristics of interpersonal punishment virtually guarantee that punishment is not going to work and that instead of being a uh, form of systematic behavioral modification, interpersonal punishment is usually a form of abuse. So <clears throat> by way of conclusion, uh, what I would like to recommend is that uh, in general, I think Thorndike and Skinner were on the right track. They were on the right track in advocating against the use of punishment. I also am hi highly in favor of uh, discouraging parents or spouses from using punishment. So I, I agree with Thorndike and Skinner on that score. I don't agree with them that punishment doesn't work. Uh, punishment, I think, can be a tremendously effective tool for behavior modification. But inevitably, inevitably, in interpersonal interactions, people uh, administer punishment, violating all of the parameters uh, that you have to satisfy in order to make punishment effective. And most notably, uh, people always violate. <laughs> it's amazing. You, you drive by a... Um, uh, uh, a playground uh, at a, a, a preschool. There are two or three teachers and 15 kids. What are the teachers doing? They're talking to each other or looking at their cell phones. What are the kids doing? Well, mostly they're playing on the playground. But occasionally Johnny picks up a handful of sand and throws it at Peter. <laughs> And Peter starts to cry, and then the caretakers jump up and punish the perpetrator, and then they go back to their cell phones. <laughs> so there's no reinforcement or alternative, alternative uh, desirable responses, and the punishment procedure has been wasted, and uh, you see this over and over and over again. So don't use punishment because you're not going to do it right. And it's not worth taking, uh, turning punishment into uh, interpersonal abuse. So be careful out there. Take care.